<laughs> problems. <laughs> or, or are they problems? This is about um, showing you some things going wrong or look like going wrong, maybe not going wrong. It, gardening is full of conflicting advice and there comes a point where you will have to decide quite often, mm, who do I believe? <laughs> I'm not saying you should believe me for one minute, but what I want to do in this two more films about problems or perceived problems is, is show you some, some examples of things that might look bad, uh, but which are maybe not as bad as they look. They're not as bad as they sometimes made out to be. Uh, for example, classic one is actually right here. There's not a huge demonstration of it, but mildew on uh, courgettes, cucumbers, everything cucurbits in the summer, powdery mildew. In my experience, in my opinion, from what I see, it's not the end of the world. It's a natural sequence of events, plants getting older, losing their older leaves. And there's quite a few courgettes in the garden here now, for example, zucchini, where the lower leaves are really quite white with mildew. And they're still fruiting really well because it's those new leaves that are the important ones. And that's also illustrated here with these. These are squash which I'm growing for winter. So crown prints, the lovely grey ones there on the compost heap. And then there's a cheeky curry right here, one plant of each actually in this little area. And the cheeky curry are the bright red ones which mature a bit earlier. And they've had a kind of hiccup this summer because we had a very warm, dry start. We managed to water them enough to get going. And then it stayed dry and we stopped watering because we don't want to keep watering them all summer. And they, one result of that was you, you get this happening where there's a fruit down here. Oh yeah, look at that revolting. Um, actually rotting. And I know that this causes some people anxieties because they ask me questions. You know, well, what do I do about this? Well, is my plant going to be all right? All that's happened there is that the plant has decided these plants kind of know how many fruits they can support and bring to maturity. They really do seem to know that. They make really good calls from what I see. And they, at that point, maybe it was too dry or they were too busy ripening the two that are there. Not two nice red squash, for example, on the same plant. Plus, there's a bit of an issue here with these yellow leaves. You know, these leaves have been yellow like this all summer. Uh, not very sightly, but it turns out it's not a major problem. It's, it's, it might be a little bit of something you could call virus. For me, though, what I've noticed with especially curry, they'll do this quite a bit if, if the soil conditions are not perfectly good for them for whatever reason. And, well, they obviously weren't quite so brilliant. And yet when they've got here, this same plant, by this stage, the leaves are going greener and they're not so yellow anymore. So suggesting, you know, there's a bit more than we know about. And there's, look at this, there's lovely squash again. So it's, it's stopped producing there, now it's starting again. Maybe partly because it's reached a little bit of heaven here, which is uh, a nice heap of compost. I'm actually growing squashes on the compost heap. Also a self-seeding potato, <laughs> there's a bit of everything going on here. So these are heaps of compost which I'm not using until the autumn. That's another misunderstanding actually about compost and how old it, for one thing, um, what I find is that it, it doesn't really deplete the nutrient store of compost growing things in it before you put it on the garden. There's just loads of nutrients in there, but also compost is about biological activation of what's already in the soil. So that's still good for use in that respect. And you can see there's some lovely squashes here. Um, other people worry that compost burns the roots. That's, I get asked that one ever so often, partly because the sellers often say this. I think they don't always understand. Um, that would only happen if the compost heap itself, if it's all in the heap, is still really hot <clears throat> or fairly hot even, because that shows the process of decomposition is still happening. And that process uses up quite a few nutrients for its own process. <laughs> and that means the plant then doesn't have enough goodness to grow well and it will look really miserable for a while in yellow leaves and that kind of thing. That's just to do with the stage of the composting process. It's nothing to do with the ultimate result of how the compost will be. So and for that reason, if, I'm, if ever I'm buying compost or having it delivered, I'll make sure it happens, that happens before I'm gonna use it 
maybe two or three or four months time thinking ahead a bit okay that's cucurbits now let's go and have a look at some root vegetables and other issues over here there's a couple of small things going on here nothing too major uh, it's quite interesting though to see what can happen to these french beans um, broken by the wind and that was that's probably about one day we were picking yesterday uh, this plant and sometimes just the act of picking you move it around a bit and it just makes it snap there it's really rather vexing <laughs> i haven't found a solution to that one i am thinking though next year maybe to grow less dwarf beans than climbing beans because they're supported they wouldn't have that problem um, it's quite breezy here but also the act of picking you know, just to find these beans there I mean there are plenty here as you can see there and they hide a bit under the leaves so you tend to lift the plant up it just needs to be done very carefully oh, it's, it's our fault as well anyway that that's just good for compost now but there is a kind of side shoot there <laughs> which will still grow a bit and then root vegetables it's been said so often that big ones go woody. This is a beetroot we harvested yesterday. There's a couple here. <laughs> and um, these were multi sown and we keep taking out the bigger ones and then the smaller ones remain and carry on growing. So this was a smaller one and now it's a big one. So this was the last harvest. And it's often said that these big vegetables are woody. It's absolutely not the case as you will see. But the main thing is that they're grown in good healthy fertile soil and then a big vegetable is just a big vegetable there's more of it so there's lots to like about that and this beetroot was sown late February and it's now 5th of August so that's quite a little while ago uh, often with root vegetables it and like carrots it's reckoned say four months is good you know this is just average ballpark figures and these carrots were sown four and a half months ago so They've gone beyond that a bit. If I take the biggest, fattest one here, actually, and just cut it, and it's not going to prove to you because you can't taste it, but you can see that I can cut it pretty easily. It snaps open very nice and clean, and that's a nice, juicy carrot. You know, these vegetables, you could still grate them. They, they don't have to be cooked, even. The beetroots like this, I, I do grate. I love them grated, and they're really moist. They, all this lovely juice comes out when they're being cooked you can see that even with my little knife I can cut around it actually is a, it's a bit firm I would say not woody for sure whoops and there we have the beach you can see you know lots of moisture there that is a really nice uh, fleshy juicy beetroot even though it's pretty big what I was hoping would show there actually is the rings but the, I think because I didn't cut it very clean uh, you get rings that form <clears throat> roughly according to each moon change um, new moon full moon new moon full moon uh, you can normally count them from sowing date going out um, to uh, or otherwise going in uh, to the current day and also here same family of vegetables chard this one you can see is bolting it's actually in a clump of three and what I find with chard is it'll tend to bolt from being sown a little bit too early in the spring. So it's not like a disaster because there's still lots of good ones. What I'll do is, since we've got three here, I'll cut it out just below soil level. You can see that's quite like a little beetroot. It has got those rings again, actually. It's really interesting. And um, this one will just go on the compost heap and the other two will carry on growing. But it's, I always hold off. I don't sow chard too early. And I don't sow it in March. This was sown mid-April and transplanted here early May. And that way you've got less inclination. It's when it's had too much cold at seedling stage that they're inclined to, uh, to bolt. And so over there, there's another bed of chard, which I sowed in early June. And in fact, there were two planting dates. The further chard, which is much bigger, I transplanted 29th of June and then there were still peas growing this end so 
I wasn't even sure if I was going to plant the whole bed of chard, but I hung on to the chard plants from that early June sowing and then decided to fill up the whole bed with chard towards the end of July. So it was, it was nearly four weeks later that the second lot of chard was planted. And that's all from the same sowing. So that's an indication, you see how much smaller it is? It's an indication of how, if you want best growth, it's good to get things out as soon as the seedlings are ready. Um, not too small, obviously, but reasonably well grown in a module or in a seedbed, however you're raising your transplants. The longer you sit on them, maybe hoping they'll get bigger or whatever, they, they take longer then to establish in their final planting place. And also it, for that, it depends on what kind of compost you have uh, that you're raising plants in. If you're doing them in modules, which I'm gonna show you next, cause we're gonna have a look at uh, questions of compost and which ones are good and maybe which ones aren't so good and which affects how they grow. <coughs> The question of compost is an important one for those of us raising seedlings in modules, pots, whatever. And it relates to what I was just saying about the chard because they happen to be in a good, strong compost, organic potting compost, which had a decent store of nutrients. So although the plants were very delayed going into the ground, they hadn't suffered too much. They were definitely looking hungry, but not as bad as, for example, this beetroot here. This was sown at the same time as the beetroot in the bed up there behind the zinnias in the wheelbarrow in early June, two months ago. And those went in the ground right at the end of June. Whereas these ones at, on, at the same time, they were the seedlings that we didn't need at the time. So I thought I'll just pot them on and keep them growing in case there's a gap appears in the garden and I can then transplant them later. And, I was kind of thinking I wouldn't really need them, but I don't like throwing plants away uh, before I'm really sure I don't need them. So I took it as a chance to try out a different potting compost. And it turns out the potting compost I put them in was worse than useless. Well, <laughs> the plants haven't died, but they just didn't grow. Really quite shocking. And it was an experimental compost I'd been sent to try, so I won't name any names here. But it's just a, you know, that's an example of plants that just don't grow sometimes and if you're a not experienced gardener maybe you blame yourself I think a lot of people do or that you know they think they've done something wrong there's not enough light not enough warmth well they're not watering enough or over watering <laughs> there's a lot of aspects to raising good plants but generally speaking if you find a decent compost they should grow they, sh they should look as if they want to grow I mean here's another example these chicories seedlings which I pricked out three weeks ago same seedlings i've got photos of the when they were actually pricked out they looked exactly the same and clearly this compost here another trial batch it's very short of nitrogen really that's what makes yellow leaves like this now these plants are not dying or anything they are just not growing if we take out a say a small one there <clears throat> you can see there's quite a few roots it's, it's navigated quite successfully through the compost, but it has not been able to find much food. And in fact, you can also see the, the lower leaves going yellow there. That's a sure sign of food running out and not much in there. And then if we compare that to you know, exactly the same pricking out starting point in a decent compost, both of these are organic. And this one, Moreland Gold, actually, it's one that I've used for many many years now and it's never let me down it's consistently good source of nutrients in there so you know it's what one you're on the pathway to success if you find a good compost like this and keep your plants growing nicely you can see the color just comparing the color and size of those quite dramatic difference and same story here this though is not a potting compost so in its defense um, the, these peas were sown at the same time we sow peas in that and we sow peas in there. And this one is, um, it's called digestate. So what the reason I tried it was because the guy who, he, it was a present again to try. And the guy who gave it to me said, yeah, you could sow things in that, you know, it's, it's good to go kind of thing. And I had my doubts because it was in the sack when it del was delivered, I put in a thermometer and it was 55 centigrade, you know, like 130 plus Fahrenheit. 
a really busy working heap. And generally speaking, that's not good, as I was saying at the beginning. So, anyway, I thought, well, let's sow peas. But the other reason I wanted to sow peas was to check for this weed killer, pyrolid weed killers, which unfortunately can be in some composts. And pea would be a good one to find out. And actually, broad bean, that's right. Do you know, I'd forgotten I'd done that. I sowed two broad beans as, and then four peas. So the broad beans in here, they would be there. They simply haven't come up. <laughs> Um, whereas the peas here come up and they're looking healthy, so even these ones, they look all right. I would say that's not pyrolid. The reason they didn't come up was just, it's not ready to go, basically. Uh, this one is supposed to be ready to go and it's not working. So if you get this kind of thing, I would complain to the compost company, so take a photo and send it. It's easier for me to tell because I'm doing a trial here, so I've got a comparison, but don't always blame yourself, you know, with these problems. Look for understandings and it's a chance, it is a chance always to, to learn more. If, if things don't go right, you know, don't despair, don't give up, but hang in there, look for reasons and, and hunt around a bit. And it, it's a chance just to see more. And we'll look at this further in the next video in this series, number four.